In this video I want to take a look at the question of buying a site in a rural Ireland or buying a fixer up or a run down derelict cottage and doing it up and looking at the difficulties and the practicalities and the issues that might arise. So if that sort of thing is of interest to you, continue watching the video. Okay. So many people have contacted me from time to time through my YouTube channel and have expressed an interest in buying a site somewhere in Ireland, perhaps in rural Ireland, and doing uh, up a place or building a house from scratch. And they can buy sites for cheap money in different counties in the country, for example, Kerry or along the western seaboard and so on. But this video is looking to address some problems or issues that will arise and which must be considered when you're going to embark on such a project. There's nothing wrong with this sort of a project. It is a dream for many, many people, but you do need to be aware of the practical considerations that you need to take into account and weigh up and throw over in your mind. The first thing is you can buy a site anywhere in Ireland, including around here in County Kildare, or indeed in Kerry or Cork or Wexford or Donegal or any place you like, you can buy a site very, very easily and very, very cheaply. However, that site is likely to be a half an acre or three quarters of an acre or an acre of agricultural land. And the biggest problem you're going to have is getting planning permission to develop it. It's not impossible, but it will be difficult. And there will be a reason as to why your property, your site is going to be relatively cheap because the farmer or the local who's selling it to you knows perhaps full well that there's no prospect whatsoever of getting planning and he may have tried himself on a number of occasions. But regardless of that, the very first thing you need to consider seriously would be the likes of planning. Will you get planning? As I say, it's not impossible, but it is difficult, especially when you don't have a local needs uh, criteria or qualification as it were you may be a blow in as it were to an area now you can get around this to a certain extent by buying the site subject to and conditional upon getting planning permission and this involves you buying the site entering into the contract paying a deposit and it would be a special condition in the contract that the sale will only complete and you will only have to fork out the balance of the purchase money and complete the purchase if you get planning permission. If you don't get planning permission, all bets are off. Planning permission can be a very slow process. The planning process in Ireland is slow. There's always the possibility of objections as well. And you may have to carry out various surveys in order to test the ground for its capacity to do or deal with sewerage and so on. Obviously, you're going to have to have meetings with the local authority. You're going to have to have planning meetings with the local authority, planning department, and you're going to have to engage the services of an engineer or a surveyor who will be able to assist you and who will be familiar with the local authority. So that's the biggest problem you're going to have. Second thing is, the second issue then would be the question of services. You might get a site and it may or may not have services, however. And when I say services, I'm referring to sewerage and I'm referring to water. It may well be the case that there is services close by, but it's very, very unlikely. In a rural setting, you're likely to have to install a septic tank or some sort of a bio care, bio cycle system, which treats the sewage from your house and allows you to discharge it safely into the ground and you're going to have to provide your own water, your own running water. So that will involve the boring of a well. If you go down deep enough, you will find water anywhere in Ireland. However, the difficulty will be that you will get the, um, depending on the topography of the particular property and where it's located, you will, you may have to go very deep and you may have uh, you'll be probably charging or being pay, be paying for the service by the foot, as it were. In other words, the further down you have to go to get hit water and a good, solid source of water, the more expensive it's going to be. So there are two things you need to consider, sewerage and services. 
Another thing you need to consider very carefully would be access to your site. So is there a right of way? Is there a local authority road? Is it taken in charge? Is it on an old land commission road? Is it a right of way that many people have used for many years? However, it's not clear who exactly can use it or has it been registered, etc, etc. You don't want to walk into a situation where somebody tells you you have a right of way to go down that boreen or that lane and the next thing is you buy the site and you start your development and somebody pops up and says you have no right to go down there there's no right of way there's no right, right of way registered and so on and so forth so that's another factor you need to consider the question then of either doing up an existing property a derelict property or building from scratch will obviously involve some sort of construction project so there's two ways you can go about that you can contract out the whole shooting gallery to a building contractor a small building contractor who will give you a price for the whole deal from start to finish and you're hoping to god that the price won't be or the contractual price won't be exceeded and there won't be significant overruns it's up to you to manage it to a certain extent but by and large you have a contract with a local building contractor and you should be able to rely on that contract you may, on the other hand, decide to go a DIY route and you may be tight for money and you may have certain building skills or certain DIY skills which you believe will allow you to do the project yourself. That's great. Then you're going to have the issue of uh, obtaining or getting subcontractors reliable, some contractors at the right price. You're going to have to organize laborers. You're going to have to organize materials. You're going to have to do the logistics of ordering in the correct materials in the correct order getting the correct trades in in the correct order and so on and so forth and that if you don't have experience is a tricky and skillful task that does require a good bit of skill a good bit of experience a good bit of know-how so there are the two ways you can go you can try and manage it yourself try and do it yourself try and use your own skills yourself in the project be it a DIY job or be it building from scratch or you can put the thing out to tender to a building contractor who will give you a fixed price and you should be able to rely on that price. They are the issues that you're going to run into if you have a dream of buying a site in the countryside for cheap money, 15 to 20 grand or buying a derelict cottage that you are going to do up yourself or do up with the assistance of a building contractor. There's one further thing that I forgot to mention there and that's just to do with the planning situation. Assuming you do get planning permission then your planning permission will contain development levies and either, in other words these are levies or monies payable to the local authority for the provision of services. It's arguable whether the local authority will be providing any services to you or not but the bottom line is there will be a condition in the planning commission making provision for you giving a lump of money to the local authority so you need to be aware of that as well and different counties have different uh, rates of levies and some counties are more expensive than others in the overall context of things it's not something that should be a real deal breaker but having said that uh, some councils can be very local authorities can be fairly enthusiastic when it comes to uh, getting in getting in finance obviously they have responsibilities and so on as well and money makes the world go round anyway that's the situation i think there are issues i think there are considerations that you need to consider if you're thinking about getting a derelict cottage in the country and doing it up or if you're thinking of buying a greenfield site a half an acre three quarters of an acre or an acre from a local farmer and trying to build your own house i think they are the issues you're going to run into hope you find this video useful if you do i would appreciate if you gave it the thumbs up down below and you may be interested in subscribing to my youtube channel thanks a lot